Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So if you're feeling stressed out and you're not having a good day and maybe things are frustrating for you, let's just paint some simple, sweet little wave cards, right? It's an abstract, really simple, moving paint around, adding in some color with white gouache, or you have a gel pen, whatever works for you. Super simple, I go over this step by step. You know, it's just something you can do when you're frustrated, you're out of ideas. Let's paint an ocean wave, we're gonna abstract doodle. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I love to do abstracts, especially colors, play with colors and just patterns like this. It is actually a great tool for being creative, uh, playing with, you know, color variations and values and wet on wet, especially, especially if you're starting out a beginner and you're just trying to figure out how to, you know, the consistency of the watercolor. It's really good for that. So like I said, leave a comment below if it's something you're interested in. Also check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials uh, on Thursdays, and a live stream on the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel. You also get first dibs on workshops and watercolor retreats. I just launched one uh, last Monday. That's gonna be in Italy. Um, so Patreons get the first dibs, and if spaces are left over after that, I put it out to the public. So check it out. You know, then you can check it out right here. Boop. All right guys, so without further ado, let's get started on painting some therapeutic watercolor waves, cards. Okay, for this tutorial, let's go over supplies. I have two pieces of Arsh, 100% cotton, cold pressed paper. Like They're almost like a five by seven size. You can make whatever size you like. And then I just have some pieces of black craft paper that I folded to make the card. Any color you want, doesn't have to be the same as me. Bigger size, smaller size, don't even have to be a card. Could just be just a piece of big, huge paper, whatever. I find that Arches paper is best for this bleed kind of wet on wet kind of scenario. Um, but if you want to find cheaper paper, go ahead and do that. For brushes, you don't need any, anything particular. Um, I can work with my Princeton 10 round from Aqualite, even this like 3 8 inch flat wash brush, whatnot. We'll be using. Um, like a white gel pen. You can use a gold gel pen or a gold pen or gold paint. Um, all that fun stuff. You can be playing around with some white acrylic ink and splattering in some places if you want. This is from Liquitex. They make it gold too. All kinds of stuff. So of course we have our water jar, paper towels and all that nonsense. So we're gonna do two different cards. Put the first one down. Now if you wanna take it and tape it down to see easier for you to make it like not move around. I just use Scotch Magic Tape. I'm gonna put it on the top and the bottom and on the sides. And it'll create like a nice little pretty border. You can hear me making that noise. Now I never have a problem with this tape tearing my paper. I don't, just especially if it's on the edge. There we go. Just tape that down, voila. So we're gonna mix up some colors here all the blues whatever kind of blues you like i have indigo here which is a great super deep if you can see this blue hold on deep blue indigo i haven't used this in a while but i've used it recently in my last painting um the peacock blue is really 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 bright um i always just like if you want to make, make a turquoise just add a little bit of yellow and you've got that pretty turquoise color, just a teeny bit of yellow. I just tapped that yellow in that color. Then we have the wonderful ultramarine blue, all the blues. <laughs> and there's a Prussian blue. It's also like a bright, deep blue, right? And then you can play around with adding some paints gray in some areas, see? If you want to add some brown, some burnt umber, all that fun stuff. So really this is simple. You're painting kind of like a wave, you know, line. Big ones, small ones, skinny ones, up and down, right? And then different types of blues, or you can just keep it more in like one tone blue, a bluish gray, and just kind of do the various, you know, values from that light to dark. It's all preference, right? I think I'm gonna play around with different blues. Um, here's my indigo. So I'm getting a fairly wet, loose 
almost like a tea consistency. This paper really soaks it up. So, And you can water it down to get even lighter. See, I'm getting it lighter on this side, adding more water. We can start off just making the first one. Just going to go up and down, up and down. See, up and down, like that. I know you guys can do that. <laughs> and then you can do it again, fat, pushing down on your brush, pulling back up, skinny, keeping that white space, pushing down, skinny. Look at that. Kind of cool, right? This is just really simple, kind of really, and while it's damp, by the way, you can kind of bleed in some color. This one kind of isn't damp right there, but play around with the color too, the bleed. This is an abstract kind of design here. We can keep, keep with the same color. I might go in and add some peacock blue, that turquoise. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow. So it looks turquoise. And that's two turquoise. You just keep messing around with it until you've got that bluish green color that you want. This is the super easy therapeutic. See, skinny. That's why you use a brush with a point. The fat back up skinny and you've got this cool way of embedding some more water all that good stuff skinny you can have like a little one connecting to it like this wiggle down wiggle up all that fun stuff and see if some areas didn't get the paint but leaves like a little texture because this paper has a nice texture to it. That's what I love about it. And here's the Prussian blue. So now we're using multiple blues. Now you can make your wave, see all this can go all the way down, but I'm gonna leave a space now in between. And I'll make some waves thicker. So I'm leaving a big space, going back up. And I'm gonna grab some more watercolor here. This one's thicker, see? and going up like that. Now at this point you can keep just that one color. You can bleed in some, I'm having to bleed in some indigo. Play around with this a little bit. Little dots, little dashes, right? Then you can do another skinny one. Down and up, up and down like that. You can even have like one kind of branching off here and a little in here. Little lines coming off that. Really, really simple, but really kind of cool and effective. And we have the ultramarine blue. I'm gonna mix that with some paints gray. Different kind of blue. My tape is kind of coming up. I gotta get this really wet because it's this paper just soaks. So you went up and down. And this is great. You follow your own path on this one. Skinny wine, fat, fat skinny. It's a very therapeutic. <laughs> Any skill level can do this and you know how you make it different. You know, you're adding different layers. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. I'm gonna go back in and add another blue. So here we go again. Filling in the color up and down. I'm gonna get a deeper color on the bottom. Almost dark. And then here we go. To so notice I got a little bit darker on the bottom I might get this one a little bit darker too. The ultramarine blue. I'm gonna do another pass over this one. I want the layers on the bottom to be a little bit darker. And the ones on top be lighter. Kind of like an ombre effect. Get even darker with this color. This one wasn't dark, so we're gonna go play around with that guy. I think that was the Prussian blue. I'm 
making this one darker. And these are fairly light up here. I'm going to do another pass on this one with the color. Going over the color is kind of fun too. It's like a layering technique. Now see, I'll show you what I mean by that. You leave white spaces, but you could do one where it overlaps. So here we go. Overlaps the first one you did. It's got to be really wet, watered down. And you get that glazing technique. You can see the line in between because you went over that one. And I'm going to do another one, just a skinny line. That. The wave. And get my turquoise in there again. Let's do another pass in the turquoise. I feel like it got too light. Really kind of simple, right? This is not, I'm not inventing the wheel here. I'm going back and add another, you can add like another color on top of this one, that glazing technique. And these little ones here, just the tip of my brush. Woo, very exciting. <laughs> and even the turquoise color, go and add a yellow. A little bit darker line in between my turquoise. You can play around with this to the Timbuktu. You know, you can add more lines that are darker once it's dry in some areas. I'm gonna go bleed Prussian blue. Ooh, you can bleed in darker color. See. This one's still wet, this one's not. Just the tip of your brush with a darker color with the Prussian blue. I can just come put a line in here in between that one I did with the ultramarine. Creating all kinds of designs. All right, at this point, I'm gonna let this dry. And then we're gonna go back in and we're gonna take our white gel pen and play around with adding in some lines, things like that. I might just put another little line in here. I don't know, I feel like I want another blue in here. It's up to you, this is what I'm saying. You can do this for days. I think this would be a really great technique or, or design to do, super large. See, I'm taking darker color, putting on that lighter color. Super large. Dark color is still kind of wet over here. Well, beautiful if you have like a beach house or something, or somebody I know has like loves the ocean, they would love something like this. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and come back and use the pen. Before we use the pen, if you wanted to go back in, I'm gonna grab some really dark indigo, just a little bit on my brush. You can go and I add some crazy lines in here, and you can go do the same thing. You can add a bunch of super dark lines, one next to each other coming in and out of the white area. You have to get a little bit wet because it's a rough texture and it soaks it up pretty quickly. Almost use it like a pen. Up and down, wiggles, squiggles tight to each other and then close to each other. See how cool that looks? You can do an example like here. Just little lines coming out. Thin and thick. So what I like about the gel pen, like on these areas here, you can just do lines. I'm gonna activate this. <laughs> okay, it doesn't wanna work anywhere it wants to work. You're just making little lines. You know, it. It's either or. I can take some white gouache, which might work better, or that acrylic white ink. Whatever white you have. Even if you had white acrylic paint, you know. Try not to use your nice watercolor brushes with the white acrylic, I mean, excuse me, the white gouache, because it can dull it, because it's a very, you know, it's more abrasive than using watercolor. So, I think the, the gouache is going to show up much better. Here we go, the gouache. 
but you get my idea. Just these little skinny little white lines going up and down. And the same little funky areas that had the blue. Now it doesn't have to be just lines. You can put circles and dots and all kinds of fun patterns. I'm just creating some fun patterns. See, I can put little dots kind of going down here. That would be really kind of cool. It's a doodle! But it's not going to wave. Very therapeutic. You can sit there and do any kind of pattern all day long. I like the dots. The dots and the lines work for me. Too many patterns, I think, it just mm, defeats the purpose of the, the, the wave. You kind of want those lines going up and down, up and down, like a wave. So dots, I don't mind. Um, too many patterns, I would, personally. That's me. If you like it, it doesn't matter if I like it or not. So I'm going to put the white up in the light areas. And then again, you can play around with the color again. I'm going to go back in. Adding some more lines. As many lines as you want. It's a wave. <laughs> That's the fun of this. There's just no right or wrong. It's super therapeutic. Especially if you're stressed out. This is like a great thing to do if you're stressed out. You're having a bad day. A bad painting day, by the way. I have those sometimes. Try this. Just paint a wave. Little shapes. Little lines. Simple. And you can get more experimentative on how they look. Alright, we'll just finish that one. I'll take off the tape. And remove this one. It looks so pretty. You could do this for a bookmark. Anything. Um, if you're really good with your computer, you could scan it in. Maybe tell the background. Make an imitation or a card on it. See? Put this on the paper. It's a really pretty card. Or if you blocked out the square in the area, right? A Father's Day card. Be perfect. So again, we'll do another fun little wave. So picture a wave up and down here. Now you can grab the same brush or even a bigger brush. It's up to you. Um, I might grab a number 12 at this point. And you keep the same colors, but we're going to start with one big color. I'm just going to water down this indigo a lot of it. You water this down really light. If you want to add a little gray to it, whatever. I'm going to grab some more indigo. And the first pass. So we're going to just do like a little mountain. It could be jagged. Like a little wave. Right? And then from there, we're going to fill that in. We're going to grab the water. Fill this in. All the way down. Goes over here. Just grabbing more water. I'm not grabbing more paint, I'm grabbing more water. I'm just putting it all the way down here. There's our first big wave. Just fill that in. If you wanted to go a little bit over here, make your wave any way you want. Mine's a little crusty, like that. Okay, so then you have to let that dry. And we're going to keep going down on the wave. Once that's dry, we're going to do another pass. It could be the same color or you can add a different color like ultramarine blue, whatever color you want. It could even be the turquoise color. I'm going to go and actually I'm going to add some of the turquoise. Let's see. So peacock blue, tap a little yellow, and you get that turquoisey color. Okay, same thing. It doesn't have to completely match the first wave, but
There you go with that wave. Now you can go all the way down on this one. I want to make it a little pointy on top. Kind of like the mountain thing that we were talking, we done before. People did mountains like this. And you kind of have to go down, all the way down. But we're going to do something different with this one. To get that two layer. And of course, we'll have to dry it and come back. All right, once that's dry, we're going to go back in. Again, we could use indigo, whatever color we want. Get a little more thicker with this indigo. Can even use ultramarine blue. Play around with that. And this time, we're going to be bleeding some stuff. So here we go. Here's the wave. Grab some water. See, I'm grabbing water. I'm grabbing more water. Put that first layer down. Still grabbing water. Grabbing water. Tapping some on my paper towel. Got to fix the tip of my wave here. Okay. At this point, you can start to play around with bleeding in color. I'm bleeding in some ultramarine blue with some paints gray. Don't need to be perfect, right? Kind of can make a wave kind of come down like that. Like I said, grab some different color tones if you want. Play around with bleeding that in, up and down. You can even take, well, it's still a little damp, some of this acrylic ink. Kind of open it. <laughs> okay, we're not going to use acrylic ink because I can't open that jar. <laughs> I should have tried to open it earlier. We can loosen up some gouache and do the same kind of technique. Okay, we're going to loosen up some gouache with my brush and you can just tap it. It'll have like a burst effect. Come on, gouache. A real time tutorials are showing my real time, not preparedness, right? <laughs> because they didn't open up the acrylic ink earlier. You want to get that gouache a little loose. It's not working. Here we go. I want it to have bigger, bigger splotches. I'm going to get some more water on that gouache. There we go. Goodness. <laughs> There we go. Shh. Zoom in so you can see. A little fun, just tippy tap. It's gonna keep doing this pshh thing. I wouldn't want to splatter it with other other layers. So I'm just gonna leave that there. Gonna give it some time to dissipate. Now this is kind of already has a hard edge that's drying. You can kind of play around now at this point, adding other colors. So here we go with the ultramarine blue and the paints gray. Mixing combo. And more gray. Let's see. Let's play around with this. Ooh. Okay. Kind of wrecked my edge, but that's okay. I can go back and fix and add another one. So we have this nice bleeding edge here. So maybe wait till that dries, but I kind of love how I kind of knocked it out and just bled the color into the color. Interesting. All right, so we're gonna let this part dry and then we're gonna come back. If you wanted to make little teeny ones, it's still damp, it's up to you. Play around with that. I want it to dissipate more. You can kind of move it by lifting up your paint. A paper going like this, sideways, this way. 
playing around with it, making it move. Mine seems like it's sitting there, but we can always play around with that. All right, I'm going to let it dry, and then we're going to come back. Aha, uh -huh, you can say, where do those white blobs go? They kind of just dissipated into the, into the paper, right? So now we can just, again, with more layers, I'm going to grab the indigo, maybe some of this paint's gray. We're going to go back in for another little wave. You can make this as thick and thin as you want. You can have little lines like oh, like this that connect. See like that? I connected it and left some of them open. Like here we go again. See that in the bottom? Grab that. That's basically uh, paints gray and some ultramarine blue. Little lines. Again, don't pay no attention to that noise. <laughs> I have a home studio, and if there's water on the ground, that is the sump pump making that noise. And I could try and edit it out, but <laughs> and just would happen again. It's just like plane sawing overhead, and all those kind of fun stuff. So now you can play around some colors again. I'm going back with the turquoise color here, pushing down, kind of making some wiggles. Same thing here, just like we did before in our first one, only this is like more of a solid kind of situation, right? And that first color, just make whatever blues you have. See more lines, kind of broken lines, all these little broken lines. So it's another wave, but it's slightly different. I'm going to be doing the white gouache again, a little bit different. I don't know if Sally like the turquoise color. Okay, this is our funky wave. So I'm going to let that dry and come back. Now, if the painting is darker, the gel pen is going to probably work better. See? And we're going to do some funky little lines, kind of connecting intensely in some areas to indicate maybe the white caps. If you still can't see it, then again, you can always just grab, grab a small brush, you just grab some gouache or acrylic ink or whatever you have that's handy, that's white, and you go in to kind of like the top area. Do this wiggle, another wiggle connecting and touching and hitting that one, bending down, going back. But it's kind of on the top of that wave part that we made. So it's kind of like a white cap. Make a few little straggly lines connecting. If that makes any sense. Not the whole don't do all the things like we did before. It's just kind of on the top of that wave, tippy top. So on each little area on the top. And again, you can make these darker or lighter, however you want. Now, my um, gouache, because it has more water, it gets translucent. The less water, it's going to be more opaque. And I'm going to get this down here. See, it's really great to show it with the dark tones. Shows up much better. But the light tones are kind of pretty too. And he's doing this squiggle kind of movement with your brush. And like I said, just kind of do the top part area. You can do all these little crisscrossy kind of lines top area of each kind of wave that you want. So it looks like a wave. I know you can think of it before, like painting those mountains, but this time we're not. We're painting a wave. The gouache is hard to see over here on the top. And there you go. Just do the top lines. 
You can get a little thicker if you want to. And then do some little ones next to it. And there is our cute little wave. See, I'm getting a little thick here. Put some little lines connecting to it. A little thick here. And there's our pretty wave. All right, so I moved the tape and I'll just put it on the card. See how pretty that it looks. Really kind of cool wave. And then the first one just gets you in the mood. Let me see where's my top. <laughs> you don't even have to know which one's up and down on this one, the first one. It's kind of curling. So we have our two different waves. Just play around, having fun, very therapeutic. You could add little more white dashed lines. My marker wasn't working as well. Maybe you have a gel pen that works better. Mine decided it wasn't gonna work for the tutorial. <laughs> but I find this so therapeutic and fun. And like I said, a larger painting with this would be beautiful and frame it. And you can kind of bleed in more color in certain areas, make those little mountains, and then just go back in and use the white for the, um, the wave part of it. So let me know if this is kind of fun. You know, this is something simple and to do when you're like in a rut, have no ideas, stressed out, but you still want to paint because painting is so therapeutic. I know if you're having a bad day, things are going bad. Just sitting down playing with color on paper that really kind of relaxes you. I mean, it's known fact that art is uh, very therapeutic. So I hope you enjoy this. Leave a comment below, let me know. And uh, take care guys, have a great day and I'll speak to you soon.